Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop, the Empire of Dirt Expanse. Today, a treat especial on the barbecue, the whole hog. I don't ask my good buddy, the yellow chicken. He's so good, he lays double yokers. Do claw what kind of tool he would have me review, says to me, oh no, I fell for that one before. I find nine inches hard to swallow. So, we got an old, we got um, <laughs> my buddy, my other buddy, uh, Ensign Expendable, he got a Kijiji, right good and proper, bought this for me for 160 doll hairs. This is the old style whole hog. Says to me via text, hey, I'm coming over, uh, I'm bringing a whole hog. It was cheap. I fire up the barbecue thinking we're going to have a he feast. Shows up with this thing. Well, a feast for the eyes, maybe. The main reason I wanted to do this is because guys on the Patreon were asking, what is the difference betwixt the old and the new? Because the new just doesn't stand up the same way the old does. We're going to have a look at the old, and then we'll go ahead and uh, cobble together some, some, <laughs> some Canadian Copex and get the new one. See what the differences are. And all outward appearances, this doesn't seem tea bag. All the teeth are on the chuck. The chuck is not proper fucked. Speaking of which, guys are asking me about uh, my health condition, or lack thereof. Uh, nothing wrong with me. Fit as a fiddle, strong as a horse. It's just my ear what's fucked. So I went sailing, and uh, Ensign Expendable swears he didn't do the old pudding pop routine on me, but I'm pretty sure, uh, well, cork stuffing makes you deaf, but uh, apparently it's because you get a dick in your ear or no a dick in my ear because it's fucked <laughs> uh, tried to salvage that i don't know how well i did yes hey you can't hit every single one right on the button now this has been used before so we'll see if it actually works and did you see that the lights dimmed momentarily you know it's a good tool when it causes the lights to flicker uh, just to bring you stoners at the back, of the, uh, you stoners at the back of the class probably already know this, but the keeners at the front of the class, this is what plumbers use for laying pipe and elect chickens use for pulling their wire. You can tell it's an industrial tool because the handle is actually a pipe thread, so you can use EMT conduit if you're an elect chicken or uh, national pipe thread if you ain't. Now these things, torquey as hell, they've been a staple of industry for years and years and years. So I think before we get into her, we ought to give her the, the respect to clean it up a little bit. Always be knolling. <laughs> Preamble's a slide. Look we here. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> I'm gonna have a look at the handle. One thing I noticed, torque screws. So the vintage isn't that old. And looking at the plate here, 1675-1, they're up to dash six now for the whole hogs, but this isn't that old. And looking at the schematic on the old confuser, what was I doing? Um, it's actually 2008 is the, the schematic date, so they might have updated it, but this is pretty new vintage. It's still gonna be super interesting because we will see the progression of value engineering when we look at this one versus uh, 10 years down the road at the new model. Starting at the beginning and issuing in your endo, connect to grounded outlet, which means you stick this in uh, yonder pixie receptacle. And of course, missing the ground lug with <laughs> the metal body, which is perfect for sending your apprentice up a ladder in the rain. Uh, show them what for. <laughs> Old school. Welcome to the tribe. And the cord itself, very high quality, robust and flexible. It is a 16, uh, American Wire Gauge 16.3 conductor, CSA listed. I don't see any marks on it. it might be EPMD. Something really quite scoop them uh, as far as material as witnessed by how, uh, how much abuse it has taken and Nary a mark on her. Same thing with the strain relief. Very beefy strain relief. That is proper rubber there. Sizal uh, dunnage inside the, the, the twined mm -hmm. conductors. And also some cording around 
looks like cotton or uh, fiber cording around. Very skookum cord. Uh, very positive strain relief as well. Now the switch, very, very robust switch. Heavy snap action. You want a good heavy switch because this is where the 200 pound gorilla meets the load. Or, yeah, I said too much. CH, so Switzerland, Confederation Helvetica. How do they get Switzerland out of the Helvetican Convention? No, Cole Hersey. So a name brand switch, and it's got uh, Lord of the Rings here and high. Okay, so high speed forward and low speed in reverse. So how they're doing that, we're actually getting two. So we're probably going to be uh, going from series wound to shunt wound, I imagine. We'll have to have a look at the, at the motor. It'll be a universal motor, brushed universal motor. But there's not... There's, there's no resistor or anything in line in the switch. It'd have to be a lot bigger in order to uh, allay the, the heat from getting all in there. A uh, little bit of a crack here. And then no, there's no bellows on this guy, on the actuator, but as witnessed by how beefy the thing is I don't think it matters too too much I'll we'll take the motor section first before we cross the Rubicon this might go spring and sprung and there <laughs> we might never get her back together but they got to take the brushes out in order to take that rotor the commutator section out fairly soft brush not super soft but definitely not hard uh, interesting little feature of it actually working if you would focus you thank you you can see on the back side there, very polished, and on the front side where it's been arcing and a sparking, we can see the spark erosion happening. So we should see, if this was a super, super soft compound, you would see the, the commutator bars be completely blackened up. That doesn't mean that they ain't no fucking good. It just means that there's schmoo on them from the soft brushes. There's, you know, there's probably 20,000 different brush compounds depending on heat, uh, all sorts of stuff. Man, excuse me, manufacturer choking on my tongue, tangulation. So they choose these brushes for price, longevity, but also how much they wear the commutator. If, if they're wearing out the commutator before, you know, the whole machine is worn out, you might want to look at getting a, a softer brush. So we'll go to the back side now. We've got her warmed up and uh, take this brush out. And then what we'll be able to do, all copper. So a lot of times you'll see these components are brass, which are good electrical conductivity and good thermal dissipation. Not nearly as good as copper, but in this case, they're using copper. It's more expensive, but you're looking at oh, in the difference there. Well, copper's a pain in the ass to, to machine too because it work hardens, so that might add some cost. We see the brush, the brush bore there, the brush, what would you call that, gantry, gallery. The brush gallery is brass. Okay, at the back side now, all aluminium casting. Nice heavy wall casting. No cheapness there. A little wave spring to preload this bearing. The bearing looks... Like it uh, could use a replacement. It's getting, it's getting kind of cookie looking. I see uh, some disgusting dead tree carcass intermingled with the tears and devastation of a once proud manufacturing nation. Now offshore to China. That's neither here nor there. There we have it. The commutator. Got the motor rotor out, also known as the armature, not the commutator. This uh, section here is the commutator. Uh, just having a, yeah, old timers moment. You can tell here, this has had quite a few hot suppers. There's no discoloration on the windings themselves, so they didn't get too hot. This front bearing is absolutely not long for this life. We can see that it's cooked the grease out of it. Now, how do you know if a bearing is bad? Well. If it looks like shit, smells like shit, and tastes like shit, you spit it the fuck out. So this guy is quite tight, and while there's no brunelling, 
There's no chunks taken out of it. Don't feel to, to have any chunks taken out of either the balls or the inner or outer races. And it would seem as though the cage is in place. It's cooking the grease out of it. That's a sign that it's got to be replaced. The backside bearing, not nearly as bad. Now, now this is an interesting arrangement because of the way it's assembled or the way it's the stack up. Normally on the back side, we would see a tiny little bearing and on the front side, a big bearing where the pinion is. But in this case, because we have the fan on the back side right in here, this is a, it's a Deloran fan. So Deloran is a thermoplastic um, that is very good at a dimensional stability when you mold it. So that's good for a, a fan, a centrifugal fan like this, blowing over all of these coils here all of these windings rather now interestingly you see this where it's staked onto the com bar normally in new tools we would see a band of epoxy and then we also see all these um, balancing slots on here in a lot of cases nowadays instead of a balancing slot they'll take a chunk of balancing epoxy heavy epoxy and just stick it on where it needs to be balanced. You see the com bars here have some of that black. That is not a bad thing. It's it's a, a lubricator and it's a conductive lubricator. So unless these are real nasty looking, you don't need to touch them whatsoever. Now we see the ingress of dust here. So there's lots of dust getting to the backside of this bearing. That means there's lots of dust getting into the brushes. That means there's lots of dust getting impregnated all over the place. Now wood isn't uh, necessarily a very conductive dust until it turns to charcoal and then uh, even then I'm not sure it's all that conductive but it does become reasonably conductive. Here we see the pinion what engages with the gearbox there. Not a huge pinion. Hasn't been used too much. These are not razor sharp and there's no grease to speak of on there. Been all uh, flung off of there. The thing is with the grease is even though it flings off, once it heats up again, it melts into all the nooks and crannies and crevices right up until, you know, it's all been melted or cooked away. So it is a wearing item, a wearing consumable. But in this case, I think we're okay. We caught it early enough. What we can do is change these bearings and uh, she'll be good for another 100,000 miles. Looking at the field windings now, nice big beefy copper wire. What's well, been properly dipped in uh, anti oh that's okay so this is that's actually a cardboard tube that it's in the uh, high permeability silicon steel laminations here all through here and we see probably why this hasn't seen much use and why we got it for a song you got one of these little guys these spade connectors flapping in the breeze Okay, so that is one of the reasons why spade, one of the failure modes of spade connectors. They come off the Jesus thing. So that doesn't happen when stuff is staked on proper. But spade connectors, some guys swear by them because even if they weeble wobble, they micro weld to where they've been arcing and sparking. But in this case, there weren't no micro welding going on to speak of. Speaking of which, now, the Deloran, we're in here into the brush holder, sorry, and that just uh, that just reminded me, I didn't mention this. So this would be, I said the Deloran was a thermoplastic. That means you can remelt it. You can grind this out, well, you could just remelt it, reflow it into a different shape. In this case, this brush holder uh, assembly would be a thermo set plastic. So once, it's like a resin. Once it's set, it will not remelt what happens is it burns before it melts. So that's why you want this kind of plastic, a resin kind of, maybe a phenolic or, or something like that, a Bakelite looking thing. That's why you want that in the brushes because those get stinking hot. In order to repair this, now you have a look at this, speaking of stake ons, you look at the switch. These are staked on permanent and those are not coming off. Uh, this motor, we haven't seen this in a tool that I can think of has a cardboard tube around it now. The carbohydrate foam, eh, you know, is it, 
it's probably less susceptible to, well, normally you'd see like a Buna N or a, a, like a nitrile rubber kind of a vibration damper or just solid right into the casement. It's funny because this is, well, this is an insulator, a really good insulator. So you'd want to sink, sink that heat from the motor right directly into, into the casement, but they're not doing that. That's kind of a, I wonder if that's a bit of engineered to fail there. If she gets hot, she'll um, definitely lessen her lifetime. Now we got to get in there to get that stake on back on, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because we still got to take the gearbox apart. We're ginger carefuling now, carefuling to get this top off without there's something springing, springing in there. Metalized tag though, very, very nice. You can see despite being ridden hard and put up wet, you still read the tag. You can still see what the model number is, what the serial number is, some of the, the nameplate data. I, if we see a new one, I bet you they've gone to a plastic tag. You just look at the wrong way with brake clean in your hand and all that info is wiped clean off. All in the name of cost savings, mind. Now that we got the gearbox capuchon removed, we can see that the the lube is cooked, this grease, how do you, well, so what we can do is we'll take all of that stuff off and slap a little more on and <laughs> demonetize. How do, it, it comes back to that rule of thumb or of middle finger. If it smells like shit, looks like shit, you know, spit the fuck out. So this is, it's seen butter days. Now as far, it looks like the bearings are okay. Interestingly here, so here's the pinion and you can see ingress of carbohydrate foam disgusting sick now this is not a herringbone but it is a oh man a gear set what gives you axial thrust a helical so this is a helical and this is a spur cut gear uh, involute so this is interesting because this is going to give you axial thrust in both directions depending on which direction the motor is turning and there doesn't seem to be anything any mitigation for that thrust although it is in there good so there might be a there might be a circlip with a thrust bearing on there we'll have to take that out to see and here's the shift fork so here's the deal let's see stub shaft comes through here that pinion shaft drives this guy this guy drives the bull gear the bull gear drives the chuck now how do you get the two speeds you look at the shift fork here this is just a bit of spring steel on a cam and that pushes out and we'll try not to lose a highball here i don't think anything's going to happen yeah that just pushes out so what does that bear on that bears on this thrust washer so there's got to be another gear set down in here maybe like a um, like a planetary and it might be locking the the carrier we won't know until we really get in there but that's that's the gear shift mechanism now you compare that to your typical drill what has just a, a a tiny little bar across in a plastic housing and when you click it over it just locks or unlocks a, um, a ring that is substantially more skookum having a closer look at this input gear you can see what's happening here this, so this is the involute and here is the uh, helical you see if we're turning one direction it's like a wedge so there is going to be instead of just pure torque there's going to be a force either this way or that way, depending on which way the pinion is turning. Now, it's just, it's only taken up by this deep groove ball bearing. Now, but this ball bearing, it's fine at taking axial thrust, but it's, well, deep groove, it's, it's okay at taking axial thrust, but um, you might, well, they've obviously got away with it, so, you know, you got to calculate the load on the bearing at the speed and then uh, take the bearing as as needed. This comes from an era when they used to make parts out of solid steel. You can see this was actually machined out and then ground. You can see the grinding. 
This looks like it's been wearing on something, but it's not because the marks, the grinding marks, instead of being the marks, instead of being around the periphery, are actually outward, like a Blanchard grinder. So that is actually a factory grind, what's still on there, and this patina is from the, the heat treating process. So this gear will be hard as a coffin nail and made out of tool steel instead of what we will find pretty much guaranteed nowadays is injection metal molded parts. So they take powder, uh, inject it into a mold and then uh, cook it into the green, uh, it's in a green state, they cook it a little bit, then they cook it some more. And that amalgamates all those grains together. So totally different process, much more expensive this way and a solid piece of steel. I'll have a look and try and maybe take this one. Uh, we'll take the intermediate. Ah, das boot is on das other foot. This is not, so this isn't a planetary gear set. There's a big chunk of steel in here. And here's what happens. So the drive either goes direct through here, the torque either goes direct through here and drives through here. Or if you push it down, if you push this down, it engages on here and we get a a lower reduction which means you get high speed so in order to do high speed you'd have to push that down let me just confirm that in order to do high speed that must be high speed there there's a L yeah so high speed that way let's see yeah it gotta be it looks like L there interesting point here because this is a solid shaft that means that this has to be a split shaft if you have two solid, uh, different gear ratios running two different gears, it's going to explode. And something's got to give, right? So this is going to have some sort of sprag clutch or gearing mechanism that engages here. So when we push this down, it's the top one that is driving. Yeah. And then if, if we let it up, then it's the bottom gear here that is driving. So... What's happening is we're getting a little of the old in, out, in, out. And we'll see. Yeah, oh, this comes right off. Whoa, <laughs> the size of that thrust bearing. Wow. And we see the dogs here. Almost looks like an impact gun mechanism. And that's what's going on. It goes up, up a little of the old in, out, in, out, as I say. There's something to be said for that. Turnaround is fair play, but turnabout is foreplay. When this guy goes up, it's engaged. Let me show you here. Yeah, that'll engage right on these. So that's the drive. This shaft is the drive for the chuck itself. And it just either engages or disengages depending on which position these forks are at. Nothing new under the sun. She ain't gonna be too happy unless you give her a little fork. In. Now the chuck has also seen butter days. It's not all Cripple Creek ferried, but it's chewy on the teeth. This is a uh, Will Fucky brand chuck. It looks like a contract made from Jacobs, that same font on the Jacobs chuck. Now, so this was um, after TTI had bought it, 2008, but just barely. 2005, I think they bought it from uh, Alice Krapko. So this uh, probably was the first iteration that TTI had it. It'd be super interesting to see, as I said, the value engineering, but this chuck in order, oh yeah, okay, there. There's a fastener in there to retain it. And we might not, we mightn't be able to get it off because as I do every time we take the whole, next time I do a drill, I gotta take the chuck off before I do anything else. Mountain, meat molehill, just about fastener fell right out of there, left hand thread, one thing, I must have on this brush, this brush holder fell out and I was saying the stake on came out. Must have been while I was dicking around with the, with the handle or something, what it came, uh, it forced it off because there's only two wires to the brush holder. So it wouldn't have worked if that was off. You know, I tested it and it worked just fine. So I was mistaken there. I must have popped that off. Now that fastener's out. Now we just got to get the pickle fork in there. Let's see if we can pop it off somehow. Eh. Fucking hey, there we go. Smashed into smithereens. I yeah, had the old 
tongue in a prayer routine. Once you get past the smell, you got her lick type deal. It didn't work or shit. I was gonna tell you all about the joys of owning a bearing splitter. This is this is like not a typical home gamer tool, but it's one of those tools when you need it, you cannot do without it. It just does what no other tool will do, which is grab a shaft and you hammer the living fuck right out of it. And of course, end up with egg on my face. But bonus nachos, we get to look at how a, a chuck works. Busted the ring clean off of her. So this is what took up all the thrust for me hammering on it with the grand marteau. <laughs> Yet again, the old x-ray comes through. So this is what happens is you you engage this guy and that turns that turns this guy that turns this ring. So this is engaged on the ring. This turns the ring. See if we can get it in there. And turning that ring might be the wrong way around. It was the right way around. But turning that ring forces this these tapered threads up. And these tapered threads are actually the uh, jaw chuck or the uh, the jaws themselves. See coming out there. So this is all on a taper. And as you're turning this outer ring, it's turning this nut, forcing these guys up. Now these are these are to all be precision ground. And that's the critical thing. You, you look at all the components in there. And that is what separates a good chuck from a bad chuck is the machining. It's tough to get all these components all with intolerance in order to have, you know, half a thou a run out. It takes a lot of money to do that. That's how that works. In case you've never seen a, a Jacob's chuck before. And the same, it's the same thing with... Uh, with a hand chuck, only very likely, I haven't had one of those apart, but very likely it's a finer thread so that it takes less torque to get the same amount of clamping. In this case, very coarse thread, and we see we have a pinion uh, gear reduction to increase the torque to get that nut to really give her a while. So that's how that works. And consequently how it doesn't work. Well, this come as a surprise to me, hubris being what it is, but Will come as no surprise to you. I'm a fucking moron. I, uh, you see the problem here? Yeah. So I'm trying to get this part off by hammering on this part. So it's supported here and I'm just hammering. That's why I fucking broke it in the first place. Fuck. What I gotta do is hammer on the inside where the bolt goes. So I need to put the left hand thread, the bane of my existence, bloody left hand thread, back in there and then uh, support it like this and whack on uh, something that's in there. <laughs> so uh, channeled my inner millwright, uh, kind of a head scratcher here. Now what are you gonna do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You send it off to the machine shop with a little tag on there that says rush. <laughs> Let the machinists figure that one out. So we still, uh, yeah, we're, we've tried the beat. We try, haven't tried the heat. So we're going to try the heat and the beat and see if she comes off. Crusty old vice grips here. That's uh, channeling my other mill right. Just, just ain't doing it for me. We got the heat, and we uh, we're gonna try the beat, heat and beat. And that sounds just as solid as a weak old turd. I uh, yeah. What are you gonna do? I mean, all we got left is America's favorite libation, WD-40. We'll hold that in reserve. I think rather than uh, channel my Hulk rage and fuck her good and proper so there's nothing but a smoldering ruin, i to take five. Think about this. A set state. You know, when you get into trouble, you seek wise counsel. I hear my wife out there uh, working away on some little project, so I'll go say hi to her, see if she wants to have some bubbly hour. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep your dick out of this vice.
son of a diddly. Sure would be nice uh, if you had a shop to work in, eh? Well, geez, let's, let me, don't get me started. <laughs> you do some nice work. One of these days somebody will make an honest woman out of you. Oh, you know, brioche in the morning, mountain shelves in the afternoon. You're a hell of a woman. <laughs>